Welcome to this QuickBooks 2019 tutorial for beginners on how to enter transactions directly in your register. My name is Matt Holquist with the QuickBooks University and thank you for joining me here. So a register in QuickBooks is uh, you, you have a register for every single account, okay? Uh, and your accounts are like your checking accounts, your accounts receivable, uh, your income, your expenses, things like that. So when you categorize those things, those are called accounts, okay? And you have a register for every single account. Okay, so a, a quick and easy way to enter transactions when you do this manually, meaning you're not using a bank feed uh, or you have to go in and enter something into QuickBooks. Uh, maybe it's a lot of past information and you needed to kind of do it quickly and you're not importing it. An easy way to do that is to use your register. Okay, so I wanna show you how to do that in this video. All right, so when we're at the home screen here and you'll see here there is an option for a check register. Okay, so if you're entering something in the checking account, which is gonna be 99% of the time, okay, you can click that and then choose which bank account you wanna to go to the register for. Okay, I'm gonna show you a little bit different way Okay, so what you can also do is go to your chart of accounts. So we go to the company drop down menu and you go to chart of accounts. Okay, so here's all our accounts. All right, now what you can do if you want to go to the checking register, you can double click like that. Okay, or if you want to go to, let's say, the vehicles, you can right click any one of these accounts and you'll see here that it says uh, use, use register okay all right so maybe you notice there's a difference in the look between this register and the checking register okay just a little bit different look now here's why that looks different this line uh, this box right here is checked it says one line okay so if I click that it's gonna look like the other register now okay so it's just a way of looking at it whatever is easier for you to look at when you do the uh, when this box is not checked okay you've got more information here that you can enter all right and when it is checked it's just to me at least a little bit easier way to read your check register all right so you can do it either way, it doesn't matter, it's not gonna affect uh, anything in the transaction. So in this one line, you're still getting all the information that you need to get. Okay, a lot of people like to have the two line. To me, it's easier to read with one line. Okay, so let's go back to our chart of accounts and let's say we're going to enter a transaction in our register uh, and it's for, you know, let's say we're doing our bank reconciliation and we realize that we missed a transaction that needed to be entered and so we need to go back and enter it <clears throat> so that we can reconcile our checking account okay so I'm gonna to go to the checking again I'm in my chart of accounts I'm just gonna double click this all right and we're gonna say that this happened on uh, 12 10 2023 okay we'll say this was a check that was written so in this field right here, this is the, the reference, okay? So it'll default to the next check number, or you can type in a check number. Okay, so I'm gonna type in, let's say that's the default check number, 494, we can type in 1295. Or let's say that this was a debit card transaction, okay? You can type in debit to signify this was a debit card transaction or you can type in EFT, you can type in ACH, whatever you wanna to do to signify that this was an electronic withdrawal. Personally, what I do is I type in EFT, electronic funds transfer, okay? But of course you can do any way, anything you wanna do. You just wanna make sure that it doesn't put a check number in when it wasn't a check. And if it was a check, you put in the right check number, okay? All right, so we're gonna enter the payee so let's say this was, um, we'll say Cal Telephone. Okay, so the amount was $54.99. Okay, and let's say uh, this is for utilities. So we're going to pick our account, and I don't know if they have a sub account here. Yep, sub account for telephone, and then memo. Um, we can just say uh, debit card for phone 
Maybe we bought another phone or something. I don't know. Okay. All right. So I tabbed and it recorded the transaction. So it put it in the register. All right. Now, if you wanted to split the transaction, so let's say, let's do it again. We'll say EFT, we'll say Cal Telephone, or we'll say Cal Gas and Electric this time, 103.93, okay? You'll see it defaulted to this utilities, Gas and Electric, but let's say we need to split this between two accounts. We're gonna click this splits button, okay? We'll say Gas and Electric was 53.93, all right? And so we have another $50. We're gonna say that this was a, we'll see if they have an account, but this was an asset. This was a deposit, okay? So, you know, when you have to put a deposit down on some things like a new utility account uh, or something along those lines, uh, we don't have, let's see, security deposits. Here we go, okay? So like in rent, you gotta put a deposit down, utility sometimes. We're going to say the 50 of this was a security deposit. So splitting the transaction, that just means we're splitting it between two accounts. Okay, then over here, you can close it, clear it, recalculate it. We'll just hit close and hit record. And you saw there, and here's some other examples where it says split. Anytime you see that in the register, that means that it was split between multiple accounts. Okay, so if I go to one line, uh, you'll see it says split in the account, okay? And in two lines, it's got it down here in this account section right here, okay? So that's a quick and easy way that you can enter transactions into your register, uh, lots you can do. Now, one thing you do have to watch out for is that if you are entering uh, something into the check register that you have entered a bill for, uh, you wanna make sure you go through the pay bills function, not directly into your check register, okay? So these are items that uh, are coming out of the account, usually debit card transactions or, you know, electronic funds transfer, that kind of thing. Uh, you don't want to pay your bills through your check register. Definitely go through the pay bills function. Any questions whatsoever, feel free to leave uh, comments below. Um, happy to answer some general questions for you. Head over to the QuickBooks University where I'll help you uh, actually answer more specific questions about your situation. Uh, website over there, qbuniversity.org.